Hey, now in this class, we will look into the architecture of the Kubernetes part two. Okay, so basically in this class, we will go deep down into the architecture. And also we have already covered the first part of the architecture in our previous class in which we had discussed about the master node and the work conduit. So now we will just go a little bit deep down into that and we will see what we will do today. So here are the, some of the topics which we are going to cover. So basically the first topic which we are going to cover is the components of the master node and the second one is which we have the worker node. So I hope you are aware of the master node. Okay, so master node is basically used to manage the cluster and doing all the stuffs. Okay, so let's start with the first topic. So here you can see the one image which we have is the master node. It represents the API service scheduler controller and this is ETCD. So you might be thinking, what is these all things? Okay. So basically, uh, the API server scheduler controller and this ATCD is nothing but the components, components of the master node. Okay. So master node is not the single thing. Like inside that we have four components. So about all these four components, which we will discuss in this particular class. So let's start with the very first one that is and the very important one which we have is the API server. So what is a API server? So API server is nothing but the very first component or the very important component of the master node. Without that you will be not be able to access the cluster that the actual Kubernetes cluster. If you want to access the cluster from the outside using some using your machine, then you will go through the API server. Okay, why because because API server provides the interface. Okay, it just provides you the interface. Okay, like uh, It may be like uh, UI interface. Okay, or using command line tool also you can do you can access the Kubernetes cluster So here are the some of the points which are mentioned you can see like it is the main gateway to access the Kubernetes cluster and also it is a central component of the Kubernetes control plane so now you might be thinking, what is this control plane? So it's nothing but it just represents your master node. It means the control plane is simply means all the set of components which are used to manage the cluster. So obviously master node will be the one. Okay. And the third point which we have, you can see here the exposing APIs which allow user to interact with the Kubernetes cluster. So it simply means like making the Kubernetes API server accessible to other components such as client, client tools or web UIs. Okay, so exposing API is just that simple. Okay, it means that and the tool which we use to access is kubectl or web UIs. Okay, it can be used to interact with the API server and it is also responsible for validating the request. What does this line refers to? It simply means like uh, whenever one client will uh, uh, request something from the API server so it will first validate that request, whether that request is valid or not okay so after validating the request that request gets approved and then the client should be able to access the thing or do whatever operation they want to do okay so this is about the API server I hope you got it and then next moving forward uh, we have another one is scheduler okay so here you can see the scheduler scheduler is nothing but as the name suggests here you can see a scheduler is nothing but uh, uh, which is used to schedule the pods okay so basically what happens like uh, here you can see the first point like responsible for scheduling pods on nodes what does it mean it simply means like whenever a new pod is created in kubernetes so what happens at that time a scheduler selects a node for the pod to run on okay so what will happen whenever a uh, whenever a new project uh, sorry what uh, whenever a new pod is created okay when a new pod is created and then after that what will happen like uh, it is not like randomly going and work on some particular nodes so like you have seen in our previous class here we have discussed like in the in the worker node we have pods and in pods we have containers okay so here I, it's removed actually so here we have suppose containers okay so what happens like scheduler what it does the role of that is it just checks so what is the requirement of the pod and what are the specification of that pod and then it decides on which container that pod should run so that is the main like uh, work of that scheduler okay I hope you got it and also like some of the points uh, uh, like is there 
like the scheduler can obtains the information from the etcd via the api server so whatever the information should be there about the specification and the configuration they access it from the etcd okay and uh, moving forward we have the control manager so control manager is nothing but as the name suggests you can see it just controls the or manages the cluster it means monitoring happens there actually so in that we have the cube control manager which is responsible to inform the node like suppose in the cluster if some node fails so what should they do like uh, the cube controller just sends the signal to the master node and then whatever the action should be done it should it is performed okay so in cube control manager also we have four controllers we have like node application service and endpoint controller so the like these control actually work in the like uh, work not separately they work they work together okay so the node container all these four containers work together it's a one a single unit so here are the some of the points like node control control what it does so node control is basically used to monitor the nodes suppose if any node fails then it just sends the report to the master node and the replication controller is this maintain the current replica count it means like maintain the current replica count it means so the thing is like what happens whenever user creates a pod or whenever they, they deploy one pod with a specified number of replicas so at that time what happens the replication control ensures that this desired number of replicas is always maintained okay suppose you are a user and you are going to deploy one pod and at that time you just uh, you also uh, like uh, mention that uh, that number of replicas should be there suppose you are uh, deployment one pod and you are giving it like three replicas should be there of that pod okay so in that case what should happen if that replica should goes down like suppose one fails then replica remains two so then that replication controller came into the role it then again try to restart that uh, pod and th that replica and then it maintains okay and the service control is nothing but the it just check whether all the services are con uh, properly configured or not and the endpoint control is just to make sure all the endpoints should be accessible and it should be working so this is about the control manager and the last one which we have is the etcd or etcad you can pronounce anything whatever you want so it's nothing but the key value database it is basically just like a log like a, whatever the event happens in the cluster like suppose one pod fails and then one pod starts or the node fails node starts node created pod created whatever the thing happens inside the cluster it is just recorded into this etcd database and it's actually a Key, key value pair database okay and it can only directly access by the api server okay okay so this one is the whole thing about the master node components of the master node now moving forward we have the worker node so in the worker uh, worker node also we have some uh, what we see in worker node also we have some sorry I did something I guess uh, wait so in worker node we have kubelet and kube proxy so these two exist so we will look into it how this thing actually works okay so kubelet is nothing but like it uh, it runs on each worker node like this is one particular worker node uh, okay so that kubelet runs on every worker node similarly like uh, the pod which is there on the worker node in the same thing kubelet also works on the every worker node and it is basically used to manage the state of the ports okay ports running ports okay like whether it fails or whether something happens to the port it just reports to the master node okay so basically how does how does this thing work so it basically works based on this pod specification like it is nothing but it is defined in the json or yml file and inside that we get uh, some parameters like we get the metadata specification and the state these fields are, are present inside that json or yml file and based upon that kubelet uh, decides what to do okay so and also it makes sure whether containers with whatever the container which are running inside the ports like here you can see i have one container just support to think it like as the container and this is one pod so like kubelet uh, uh, make sure like uh, every container should be running always 
and the we have Q proxy. So Q proxy is nothing but uh, it is responsible for managing the networking aspect of cluster and the network configuration and the rules. So suppose uh, uh, like uh, networking things like uh, IP addresses, DNS, uh, all those things is managed by the Q proxy. And the last one which we have is the container runtime. So container runtime is nothing but the software which is responsible for running the container. So actually Kubernetes does not provide the direct way, some direct way to run the containerized application. So that's why this container runtime came in the role. So this is basically nothing but the Docker. The Docker is the most uh, famous and the most uh, preferred and the most used containerized app like uh, software which we used. Okay, so there will be Docker. Okay. So this is the, all the things uh, I hope it is clear like uh, all the components of the worker node and the this one master node. Okay, so uh, I hope you uh, you got it everything whatever we have discussed if you have any question you can ask us so uh, we will stop here and I'll meet you in the next video. Uh, thank you for watching.